So here we have our first lecture on Newton's laws. Key ideas for our uh, class today are going to be uh, define Newton's first, second, and third law, define the difference between mass and inertia, uh, what inertial reference frame is, and drawing free body diagrams in order to solve the problem. So first thing we need to know is uh, recall Newton's first, second, and third law. Remember, we know that Newton's first law states an object in motion stays in motion, or an object at rest stays at rest unless acted on by an outside unbalanced force. Newton's second law is really our bread and butter, which is forces cause masses to accelerate. Uh, that's actually in its simplest form. And then Newton's third law is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now, for all intents and purposes, what we can do is we can actually ignore Newton's first law. And what I mean by ignore Newton's first law is Newton's first law is a special case of Newton's second law. And Newton's second law that we're going to start with, as I'm sure you remember, is the sum of the forces are equal to the mass times acceleration. Notice force and acceleration are both vector quantities. Now this is Newton's law in simplest form. Newton's law is actually a momentum law. So when we start getting into more complex situations, what we need to do is replace this F equals MA. We take, uh, we apply some calculus rather, to get our momentum conservation. Moving on to what mass or inertia is, you may remember. that inertia is an object's ability or tendency uh, to remain at rest or in motion. Newton's first law is often referred to as the law of inertia. Inertia is basically an object doing what it's doing. And if an object is moving in a straight line, it's going to continue to move in a straight line. If an object is at rest, it's going to stay at rest unless something acts on it. We know this to be a quantitative, uh, a quantitative variable that we measure in kilograms otherwise known as mass. So mass and inertia are basically the same thing. One of them explains the other. Uh, moving on to our free body diagrams. What a free body diagram is, is a diagram with all of the forces on an object. <clears throat> I very, very specifically say not component forces. When we get into a couple examples, we're going to break objects down into components, Y components and X components. But those are observable forces, not actual forces. So we need to be careful there. So before we continue with our examples, uh, what I want to talk about is an inertial reference frame. For all intents and purposes, we are going to assume the Earth is an inertial reference frame. An inertial reference frame is measured where any experiment you can do, the experiment holds true using Newton's laws. For example, an elevator moving up or down at a constant velocity. You would never know you were inside that elevator. All of Newton's laws would hold true. An inertial reference frame is not something that is moving with some accelerated rate. So <clears throat> that comes into play a little bit later on. Right now, we're going to assume all objects are taking, I'm sorry, all experiments are taking place on that inertial frame. So to move to our first example, uh, here I have two masses. Uh, they're in contact with each other just big M and little m, and then there's a force pushing both masses to the right. As you can see, I drew in these little blue arrows in between. These little blue arrows are called contact forces. So, when I draw my free body diagram, I draw a diagram of each mass. Now, I could have taken the whole thing and uh, used as just one object. That's the first way I actually solved out this problem, amplifying the acceleration. But just for examples of uh, force diagrams, I want to put them both here. Um, we do have special forces, which we'll get into in lecture two, but we have a force from the ground that's holding this box up. That's the normal force. The normal force has a force that's acting, uh, I'm sorry, that's opposite. That's the force due to gravity, or the weight that's holding the object down or pressing against the ground. Then I have this force to the right. That's the applied force that's pushing all the way to the right. And lastly, I included this small contact force. That's the force of the small mass pushing on the big mass. That's to the left. Notice these are all actual vectors, and notice my magnitudes are all in respect with each other. The normal force is equal to the force through gravity. The applied force to the right is bigger than the contact force to the left. Uh, on my small mass, the only thing I have pushing is that small contact force, F. I have a normal force that would be pointing up, and the force through gravity pointing down. Now, if I wanted to solve for the acceleration, there are two different ways to solve this problem. The first is we're going to apply F net equals MA. That's all of my forces are equal to the mass times the acceleration of this whole thing. Well, my net force, that's F, 
is the big mass m plus the small mass m times a rearranged to find my acceleration. This is a very straightforward, easy problem. We could have made it more complicated and examined both objects independently and then found the answer together. So here, f net equals ma of my big mass, my big force f minus my contact force equals the uh, big mass times the acceleration. Ease, uh, sorry, likely I have the small mass, f net equals ma, looking at free body diagram number two, little f equals ma. I've left this in uh, this form, but if you solve for A, you should yield the same result. I think you should test that to make sure. Last example here, I wrote out a word problem. Uh, take a look at the word problem. I'd like to try and pause and then solve out the word problem, but I broke it down into steps with an answer. So after we have our, our problem, my first thing I'd like to do is make a sketch if a sketch isn't provided. So here I have the mass, I have a pulling force, and I have at some angle. I've also included my axes, my y direction and my x direction, so I have a positive direction. This, this is going to become very important. Next, I draw my free body diagram. I have a normal force, I have the force due to gravity, and I have this push, oh, I'm sorry, this pull force. Uh, notice my normal force is smaller than my force due to gravity here, and that should be uh, accurate. Next thing I'm going to do is I break it into components. We know this box is not lifting off the ground, which is why I had that normal force smaller, and it's being helped by this push force. So I redrew my components. This should actually be a little bit smaller. So I have my force due to gravity, or my weight, my normal force, my push force, and that's at still at the angle that's stated in the problem of 30 degrees. Next, I'm going to break up my components. I have a y direction of the applied force and an x direction of the applied force. Last, I'm going to apply Newton's laws. We can only add forces that are going in the same direction, if we remember that from vectors. So I have my force in the y direction of mass times acceleration. All of my y forces, I have a normal force going up, that's in the positive direction, subtracting out gravity in the negative direction, plus my y component of my applied force, equals mass times acceleration. Again, the problem doesn't state the, uh, that my box is moving up the ground or top going into the ground. I know the acceleration in the y direction or vertical direction is zero. I take my y, um, my y applied force and I break it into components. So I have the normal force minus my force to gravity is my component of my push force or my applied force. Rearrange my variables, and this is a showing that the normal force plus how much I'm trying to help lift this box is equal to the force through gravity, and that should make sense to you. Now, the meat and potatoes of the problem is solving the acceleration in the x direction. Uh, here again, f net equals ma. I did leave off my vector. Now, my x component is only one force here, and that's because we're not talking about friction right now. So I have an applied force, Fp cosine theta, that's my x direction force, equals to mass times acceleration. Rearrange to find acceleration of just the mass in the box divided by uh, force, the, the x component of my applied force. This should be pretty straightforward. We're going to get more into this in class. That will get more complicated as we go. The reason why I solved that this y direction of the y component of the force are because though this proved to really be nothing now, it showed us two things. Again, it showed us that the normal force and my applied force equal to the weight. That would make sense. This also is going to become a very important force when we start talking about friction. Uh, have any questions for me? I'll see you in class.